My name is Mad Lib the Bad Kid, aka the Beat Conductor, aka YQ, aka Quasimodo. Fuck that nigga, aka you know me. You need to know your history so you know the future. And there were a lot of important people that were passed up that are better than the mainstream artists. If you like my music, then you're gonna have to go study what I sample. Even I study what I sample because that's where it comes from. And I always felt this about the best hip-hop producers. You're actually giving somebody a guidepost to go discover something new. I'm sampling them, but everybody's like liking my beats, but they don't even know about the artist. But, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? with for 20 years. When me and him were doing that label Stone's Throw, it was him that we built the basis of the label upon. Like, really. We had this moment in hip hop where you were supposed to be the appropriator and you were supposed to be very irreverent about why you did that. Why you did it. You just took it because you could. And then with our generation, we had the opportunity to say, well, you know what? Actually, we'd like to still be able to appropriate this music because like, the idea of creating something from this is important. But understanding the creator is just as important. The main point of it is that there's a multitude of musicians and craftspeople around the world that people just haven't paid any attention to. And it's not that they're esoteric creators of something that the multitude can't embrace. It's just that no one's bothered to ask them questions and to focus the attention on them that allows them to showcase this thing that they do so well. And that's what it's all about to me. It was very nice to meet you, Ayelu. Thank you. My name is Malib, I'm a producer. My name is Ayala. Yes, I love your music, I, I love Thank your records. You. So Ethiopian music from the 70s was a relatively unknown thing until about the mid-1990s when Francis Falsetto did this series of reissues called Ethiopiques. Now Ayala Mespin had one song on the Ethiopique series and it started off with a fuzz guitar. And it was one of the only songs with a fuzz guitar. And so you're like, who is this guy that was like incorporating like this kind of hallmark of American and European psychedelic music and Ethiopian music? Most producers look for that type of thing, where you can get funk, jazz, rock, psychedelic type of feel all in one. And it took a bunch of our friends to actually go digging in Ethiopia to bring more 45s back. And then I started buying 45s from this guy in Greece who was buying 45s from an Ethiopian flight attendant. Hmm. And he was sending me all these records. And every time I got an Ayelu Mesfin record, it got a little bit deeper. His brother, Ono, sampled one of the 45s I had, Liba Mentahone, and made a beat with it. <laughs> A friend of mine who was running an ad agency loved the track so much he wanted to put in a Mountain Dew commercial. So I said, I owe it to myself to try to find this guy and see if I can not only make him some money, but clear this sample and maybe find out more about this music. And I found out he was here in Denver. I was working with these Vinyl Me Please folks yeah. and, and I explained to them that there was this guy in Denver that I really wanted to do something with and I had a feeling that there was a tremendous amount of music that was not only worth exploring further, but that might actually intrigue the people that listen to them, you know, that subscribe to their service. And uh, they came out with me, we went to Ayalu's house and found all his master tapes and all of his records and it was better than we'd ever hoped. Now it's good, like Pramit. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was there, not just the records he made, which were all incredible, and he had kept 
since he left Ethiopia in a little 45 book. Mint condition copies, like records I'd never seen, with picture sleeves, that impossible was, to that find. That was dope, that was impossible dope. Impossible to find. But he kept tons of reel-to-reels of unreleased music that he'd taken when he left Ethiopia. There it was. A producer's dream. All at once. A sampler's dream. Well, there it was. It was. A sampling man's dream. Should we go sit down? Yeah, please. Please. Hey, Tan. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. Wow. I can't believe this is happening. Mm -hmm. Which one's, uh, one's Luda Mentahone? Is it? It's in here, right? Al. Yeah, and you here. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Man, it's what are these? Yeah. That's the real to reels that I was playing. It's it's like, let's work together. Okay. For your music, instantly I just get funk from it, and it's. It's the raw sound that I like. It's dirty, a little bit dirty. And that's how I do my music too. Because all my equipment's broken and I still make the same type of music. I don't use computers, I don't use anything. Can you explain your music, your style of music? That's a good look, James Brown. No music at all, 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 no music at all. Like, you know, he couldn't have known that Americans would fall in love with his music because he used music that was familiar to them and infused it with this Ethiopian tradition. Not not only do you have to like make it possible to let Ayelu express himself, but you have to be respectful of the fact that he probably didn't even know who he was leading up to this, right? Like it's this conversation that goes a lot deeper than, oh, you should listen to all of his music. How do you feel when you listen to it? Good, good vibe. But I'm the size of some manjan again. Bizu, Zimbelo, Yalla Fubizuch, Yasa Zulu, Yalla Kabadam. Bizu Masarati Chin, not better. Yan and Dagmo, Yamarat Kut in any. Lahagar, Lehez, Lemmy Chokono, Lemmy Badalu. ሊቆሙ <laughs> The most important thing he's going to do is protest tonight. I mean, he's going to play a song or two, but he wants you to listen to what he's protesting for. A lot of people get killed for no reason. So that's why he can't really perform a whole show. And most people can't really understand that. They're just fans, you know? Like, he's deeper than a musician. He's like community activist, right? Absolutely. So you have to look beyond a musician. They have lives too. So at this time, I'd like to welcome Ayalu.
Ayalu is a legend of this music. Let's give it up, big up him. Nanta Yesaun Kabriya Metauku Takurna Chasatalu Musika Kwan Kwama Honun Aukachu Waganoche Yeni Waganoch Yala de Ragutin and Nantadragachu Zari Zipa Makanya Tachu Bounet Xavier Yisteling Amasekinalo. The music's so great that even if you don't know about that, if you don't know about the protest, you can hear him singing like this song, Hasabe, which he's going to sing, My Worries. You know, he was singing that before he knew that that was going to be the theme for this night. There's a lot of musicians all around the world that we find that have that, that same thing going on spiritually. Like, they all sang the same kind of, of, of thing about the human predicament. And you just want to give them the opportunity to perform again and allow other people who might never have even thought that they'd love music from this part of the world, from this type of person, from this culture, from this religion to understand and appreciate it. And that happens in America, too. Thank you for coming here tonight. God bless America. Some kids are going to get it later because things go in cycles. And so that's what I'm thinking about all the time. Every time that we sit down and try to explain something to somebody, like, why is Ayalu Mesfin important? Why is Steve Kuhn important? Why is Weldon Irving important? We want more people we can talk to about these type of things. Yeah. There's you have only to start like five or six people I can talk to, Kareem Riggins, him, Dilla R.I.P., and you know, there's not too many people I could talk to about the things I like. So I think about the narrative beyond that, right? Because back in the early 90s, when Pete Rock or Gangstar or whoever, you know, used some crazy loop and you figured out who it was, and then you found out something about a different scene of music you didn't know anything about, that was one thing. But nowadays, in the age of like lateral spread, right, where you can get on YouTube or Spotify and just move that way, you know, left to right, it's about explaining somebody in a sentence or two why they should care about this movement and then let them go from there. Mm. Hopefully they go deep. Maybe they only go lateral. It's okay. Mm -hmm.